I have seen the Lord. Please be seated. So we have one high holy day after another. This is our high holy day of Tuesday of Easter week. It's wonderful to have you all back. And it was beautiful to celebrate the dawning of Easter with all of you during the vigil and to celebrate the baptism of Bryce and Chase and Kai and Jeremiah, Josiah and Ezra. It was so wonderful. So it's great. So there are texts we return to again and again. And John 20, 11 to 18 is one of those texts that for me has layers and layers of reading and studying and praying. I've started to make little notes in my commentaries of what date I, I read. I went back to it. And it's really wonderful to keep a record of, of if it sounds familiar, it's because, yes, I, I, I read it last year. Um, and this, uh, this Tuesday of, of Easter week is a beautiful day on which to, pre to preach. Easter week is uh, energetically supercharged. The risen Christ is reuniting with his friends on roads uh, at meals, on the beach. He appeared to more than 500 sisters and brothers at one time. We heard that in the epistle reading on Easter yes, uh, Sunday. And just doing, just coming and being with people. There are many other signs that are not written in this book. And it happens right here. So today we have Jesus' appearance to Mary in the garden. Uh, one of the memorable revelatory conversations in the Gospel of John. She misunderstands it first, then recognition grows into reunion and communion, mutual naming and commission. Now there are many wonderful biblical scholars on the Gospel of John, but my favorite are two women, one Roman Catholic and one Anglican, Sandra Schneiders and Dorothy Lee. And both have written about the three participles, the three verbs that uh, structure this reading. And they are the three actions of weeping, turning, and announcing. Klaiusa, strefusa, and angelusa never use Greek words in preaching. You learn that, but I just can't resist because they're so beautiful. Weeping, turning, and announcing. I recall in 2018, I was filling in for the New Testament professor who was on sabbatical, and I was teaching the Gospel of John. And we did a kinesthetic experience with this text it was a spring day, not unlike this one, and we were in the old classroom building. I don't know if any of you remember that. Um, it had chalkboards and an analog clock, and it was very creaky, and the AC didn't work. And then we would use that classroom and the one next to it and then go out on the walkway. And hold that thought. <laughs> so the first thing Mary does is weep. Her weeping does not represent faithlessness, but the human expression of response to loss, the loss of someone she loved. She remains in this place of sorrow to articulate the pain of her believing yet doubting community in this tender time right before their experience of resurrection. She persists in her search, and she models for us uh, having the courage to stay in the place of pain, to be in sorrow, to acknowledge 
the grief and pain of human life. We have done that as a seminary community many times. When we've lost our loved ones, family members, even members of our community. When we've experienced nearby violence and hate, we have turned to that sorrow and brought it to God, just as Mary does in the garden when she is weeping. So in our class, I ask people to work with a partner and practice weeping and get into it and uh, then perform it in the class. And when we enacted weeping, there was so much sniffling and snorting and people were out of breath and they couldn't speak and their faces were distorted and unrecognizable because of their weeping. And we experienced that sorrow and that inarticulateness even in our enacting of the weeping. Then the second verb is turning. And this one is used twice in the story to emphasize it. Mary turns toward Jesus. And she has been searching for what she's lost. She finds him. She turns and she hears his voice speaking her name, Mary. And she uses his name, Rabuni, which is teacher. And she's not wrong because she, he is her teacher. And she is the learner and the follower and the one who's going to continue her learning in this encounter with him. She represents the community of faith. She, this scene prepares the reader for the giving of the spirit, which is going to happen next. She has mistakes and misunderstanding along the way, not recognizing him, thinking he's the wrong person. And she represents the growth and journey of lifelong conversion and turning toward God on which we all walk. That ongoing not understanding, learning, turning towards God. When the students in B2310 worked in pairs on the turning, they turned toward each other and a relationship was established between these two bodies in their reorientation of posture and of interrelationship. I think we went to the Mott for this part. We were no longer on the walkway. We were down the Mott um, and experienced this turning toward each other. And this turning goes both ways. It's not only Mary turning to Jesus and we in our conversion turning towards God, but it is God turning toward the world in Christ. Mm -hmm. The whole gospel is about this becoming flesh, creating the world, and then laying down his life for his friends. God has turned to the world in Christ. Jesus seeks Mary and calls her. And in that pair of Mary and Jesus, mutually naming each other, mutually speaking to each other, we have an echo of the relationship between the Father and the Son. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is in the Father's bosom, who has made him known. That mutual relationship. And finally... Angelusa announcing she is called to mission. She is commissioned just like the 12 on the mountain at the end of the Gospel of Matthew. But of course, because of the tradition that grew up of male-only disciples, this was suppressed in the tradition that came to favor the 12. But here is this first resurrection appearance to Mary and she is called. She's called 
toward the creation God created. And she finds her voice like the prophet, like the psalmist. She is the disciple whom Jesus loved, the apostle to the apostles. I have seen the Lord. She sends the senders. She's the sender of the senders. <laughs> and the students, we're out in the mott, and we're in a little huddle. And when it comes time to Angelusa, the students raced outward and shouted to all, in all directions, I have seen the Lord. And you could hear it all over the mott, echoing, and now people were at the edges and at the corners. And there was, they, they found their voices because their weeping had ceased. Their weeping had ceased because of the turning. And they had regained their voices and regained their hope and their joy. And these disciples running from a huddle to all edges of the mott are our models for who we are today. We're sent to turn again to the world, first after being in our sorrow and acknowledging the pain of human life, and then turning to the world as God does in Christ to heal the world, to restore the world, to make the creation new. So there we are, running around, testifying to our vision of Christ, weeping, turning, and announcing. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia.